The first time I laid eyes on Persephone, I had no idea as to her history or the significance she would hold for me in time to come. I was in Berlin, and the antiquities collection of the famous Pergamon Museum was on my list of cultural must-sees. Seven years later, I would arrive in Locri, Persephone's hometown in present-day Calabria, with just a suitcase in hand to teach English to the descendants of her disciples. Somehow, another seven years would slip by, and I decided it was high time to see her again, but with a much different eye. I knew she was in Berlin, but wasn't exactly sure where. Part of the Pergamon was closed for restoration, and some antiquities had been moved to the Altus Museum next door. I walked into the Pergamon first and asked at the ticket and information counters. No, sorry, never heard of her. The same responses at the entrance and in the bookshop of the Altus Museum which I thought was odd for such an important marble statue. Nevertheless, I wanted to see their classical antiquities collection, so I bought a ticket and entered. The hallowed halls of the neoclassical edifice host a stunning exhibition of Greek, Roman, and Etruscan art. It was difficult not to linger in the face of such masterpieces, but I pushed on to determine if and where Persephone was on display. And then, turning into the end wing, there she was, sitting in the middle of the exhibit space, perched on her throne, sitting straight and tall, and exuding a calm dignity as she beckoned with her half-smile. I was clearly in the presence of a goddess. Her official museum title was Enthroned Deity, so-called goddess from Tarentum. Ah, therein lay the confusion. No wonder the staff wasn't aware of a Persephone in their midst. One had to read further for any mention of her. Later, looking more closely at the museum's website, I would see that she was chosen as one of only eight objects to feature in their online image gallery with the same designation in German. The location of origin, however, was given as Taranto, ancient Taranto in Puglia, or Locri, with an acquisition date of 1915. The museum appeared to have it narrowed down to two ancient cities about 228 miles apart by today's roadways. The mystery continued with regard to her identity. Quote, the enthroned woman represents a goddess, but the lack of attributes does not allow for a definitive identification. Persephone, Hera, or Aphrodite were discussed as possible choices. It can be assumed that she once held an offering bowl in her right hand. Most certainly, the monumental statue served as a cult image in a sanctuary in southern Italy. End quote. In Calabria, the prevailing theory of the statue's history is that it came from Locri. Locri Epizeferi was the official name of the ancient city, and it was illegally smuggled out by sea, with its first stop being Taranto, thus the discrepancy. After my recent viewing of the statue, I ran across a book written by Angelo Conte, an archaeologist from Taranto, who claimed to have the definitive story. His book is called The Smiling Goddess, Persephone or Aphrodite of the Tarantino People. In a nutshell, Conte doesn't believe a Calabrian eyewitness account of the statue's presumed discovery in Locri, and he asserts that in Taranto, the statue was found in a deep well, which he concludes would never have been a transitory hiding place for such a heavy object. Conte's theories on the subject are challenged by Calabrian Giuseppe Macri. In the wonderfully entitled On the Trail of Persephone, Twice Kidnapped, he reiterates the case for Locri and backs it up with an opposing interpretation of the documentation 
regarding the course of events, while also emphasizing the special connection Persephone had with the Locrian people. So, in addition to the intricacies of the statue's 1905 discovery and concealment that were revealed 61 years later by an aged farm worker who had taken an oath of secrecy as a young man, and wanted to unburden himself of the archaeological secret at the end of his life, the question as to just who this figure represents is also integral to the case. Persephone was the daughter of Zeus, king of the gods, and Demeter, goddess of the harvest. She was abducted by Hades and taken to his underworld, where she was offered fruit. Although she only partook of several pomegranate seeds, she was obliged to remain in the infernal region for eternity. Her mother, Demeter, reacted by initiating a long, cold winter, depriving the mortals of their mild weather and rich harvests. Zeus intervened, and considering that Persephone hadn't actually eaten a whole piece of fruit, but only some seeds, it was determined that she would remain in the underworld for half the year and in the spring return to earth as the personification of vegetation and of course to be with her mother. This myth explaining the alternation of the seasons was important for the Greeks and was brought to southern Italy with the establishment of the colonies and cities known as Greater Greece. Interestingly, Locri Epicephori had a particular affinity for Persephone and had a major sanctuary dedicated to the goddess. In addition to small statuettes of Persephone and other votive donations discovered in the area, the sanctuary also contained a treasure trove of what are known as pinakes or terracotta tablets with bas-relief illustrations that represent the cult's myth and rituals. Unique in the Greek world, the pinakes were donated to the sanctuary by young maidens ready for marriage, in the hope of receiving Persephone's protection during the transition into womanhood. Mostly created in the 4th and 5th centuries BC, the pinakes show scenes of daily life with people, animals, and objects of both mythical and cultural importance. The kidnap of Persephone is the scene most often portrayed. Does this prove that the statue is from Locri? No. However, a monumental Persephone such as the statue in the Altus Museum would certainly have been in keeping with the Locri sanctuary dedicated to this goddess. In addition to all the intrigue with regard to the statue's origin, place of discovery, and its eventual path to Berlin. The goddess's identification has been deemed by some to be uncertain. Although the marble has traditionally been referred to as Persephone, a proposal of Aphrodite has also been put forth. In order to fit in this role, however, the more familiar goddess of love would have to tend more towards the stately lady who presides over marriage and a young girl's passage to adulthood. A bit like Locri's Persephone? At a distance of almost 2,500 years, an ancient culture's concept can get lost in modern translation. The mysterious goddess dates from 470 to 450 BC. She is still as elegant as ever, despite her sufferance of unspeakable damage by disreputable handlers in the years after her discovery. Ill treatments include having had her head chopped off, as well as an attempt to separate her body from the chair. She sits as though not bothered by the loss of her forearms. The soft curves of her attractive, regal physique are draped with elaborately detailed vestments. Her underdress is overlaid with a garment that is wrapped around her shoulders and finishes in natural waves at its hemline resting on her knees. 
A little remaining color on the back of the chair hints at the brightly painted environment of these ancients. Her archaic smile denotes poise in a calm face framed by crimped hair that flows in long tresses over her chest. Holes in her ears and her crown indicate that she would also have been adorned with metal jewelry. Persephone is nothing short of spectacular. Perhaps I'm biased, but I'm convinced that the statue represents Persephone and that her home is Locri. To me, it makes sense. I believe the old man who came out of the woodwork, urged by his parish priest to clear his conscience. But long before he came forth with his story, there were strong indications in favor of Persephone and Locri Epizephori. And what would the original motive have been to have mentioned Locri if it wasn't somehow involved in the story? As it stands, and as it will surely remain, Persephone holds court in Berlin. The statue, which sits just shy of five feet tall, is a pivotal piece of the collection, listed as a highlight on the museum's website and described as taking center stage in the section on the Greeks in southern Italy. The Germans paid dearly for the statue that was smuggled out of Italy 100 years ago, the equivalent of 150 million euros today. Without the so-called confusion of it all, however, the so-called goddess from Tarentum would certainly have a name and a place of her own, or at least a name and an origin proudly displayed on her accompanying label. She still means a lot to the people of Locri. As a matter of fact, it was a middle school English student who first made me aware of her connection with the area. She wasn't just a beautiful statue in a museum for him. She was Persephone from Locri. There was no so-called about it.